Okay, this video is going to show how to fix the Bose RC9, Bose RC20, and Bose RC25 remotes. Uh, these remotes control the Bose Lifestyle 20 music centers and some other different music centers for Bose. Uh, so some of the problems, this is the Bose RC20, some of the problems for these remotes include uh, particular buttons not working, but the other buttons do work, and that's a relatively easy fix. Then you also have uh, the entire remote's just not working. You, it doesn't matter, any button doesn't work, or it could be it's a range issue. If you're about a foot away from the system, it works. Otherwise, you back up any farther, uh, it does not work. And uh, so we're gonna walk through those, uh, those repairs on the Bose RC20. These uh, exact same steps can be followed for those aforementioned remotes, so not to worry. Uh, pretty much mirror identical in terms of uh, in terms of disassembly, so you don't have to worry about that. Disassembling the remote is probably the hardest part of this, and uh, there's really no foolproof technique. But I will show you what I've used for several remotes that has seemed to work well. Um, what you'll find is that it's pretty, you can do this without damaging the seam. So this is one remote that I've already taken apart, and uh, there's really no chips or anything, so that's nice. Um, you should be able to do this without really damaging the cosmetics of the remote. What you'll want to do is take the battery cover off, and then that way you can apply leverage from the inside here. And so if you do chip away at something, it's not uh, easily identifiable, or it doesn't matter as much. And to start, you're going to want to work on the bottom here. Use a pry bar like this in addition to a uh, really small flathead screwdriver. I suppose two flathead screwdrivers would work and if you didn't have a plastic pry bar, although the plastic pry bar you can get very cheap. So for the sake of the camera angle, I'm just gonna work on this from the outside. It's a little difficult to film, but I would recommend working from the inside if you're gonna do this. So basically all you have to do to disassemble this pry these two separate pieces of plastic off. And that's easier said than done. You're gonna to wanna to work, get an angle, spread it with your fingers here. Get a pry bar in there. Now once you do get a pry bar, you're gonna angle it a little aggressively. And you hear that pop? There are several tabs along the sides here. There's one here, I believe another one here, another one at the top, another one here, another one here, another one here. So there are three on each side, and then one at the top and bottom. And that's what's essentially securing the two pieces of plastic together, these tabs. And I can show you on this side, we just popped one out. It's a little difficult to see, but you'll easier to tell on the side. You see how we pop that out? And now once you get one popped, you're just gonna wanna put your pry bar in there and continue along at an angle. You know, don't be shy with it. And you can work around it. So here, do we even get two? We got two. So we've got the three popped out on this side, two on this side. We gotta get the third one. Okay, and now all that's left is the tab on this end. And to get that, we just pull up. And there you go. And I must have been lucky, because in the past I've been known to break this little piece of plastic here. So if you try this on your end and you break the plastic, it's not a big deal. You can just apply some glue when putting it back together and you don't worry about it. Okay, so now we've removed the rear casing and now we just wanna take the front casing off of the, uh, the main board here. So we just need to take this, pop it out of its uh, front casing here
like that. It's really easy. Just apply a little bit of force and we want to remove this here. And you'll see that the board just comes out freely like that. So here's what the innards of the remote look like. And then here's the front casing. You can just pop out the buttons like that. And now we'll address um, the issue where maybe one or two buttons aren't working so well. And what will fix that more often than not is just taking some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and uh, applying some light pressure and cleaning the button contacts. Um, so what you're cleaning off is just years of accumulated uh, oil from your fingers and whatnot. And so you do that, and that should work some. And then likewise, on the uh, reciprocal part of the system, you'll want to clean off uh, the main circuit board, uh, just applying light pressure, Q-tip, and uh, that'll do it. So go ahead, plug everything back in here. And then test your remote. If that fixes your issue, good. Um, if your buttons are still really acting up and no matter how much you clean them, uh, they're not working, then it's possible that they've lost their conductive coating. So what that means is, well, let me backtrack a little here. How your remote works is each one of these represents uh, a unique circuit. For instance, when you press down your power button, uh, it tells the remote, okay, send the on off signal. And uh, it does that because when you push down the contact, the circuit is connected and the, it broadcasts the signal. If your button contact has lost its conductivity, when you push this, you'll have to push really hard in order for the connection to be created, for the circuit to be completed, for it to broadcast its signal. So how, you wanna, how do, are you going to fix the, the loss of conductivity? Cleaning it won't do it. What you'll need to do is apply some conductive material here um, such that the remote will work uh, more tact, such that the button will be more tactile. Um, so there are a couple of fixes you can do. You can take a small piece of tin foil, uh, glue it to this contact, and that will work pretty well. Um, I mean, it's a conductive material, and uh, it'll complete the circuit no problem. It could be a little fussy to get it to stick, um, and then it may not last as long as you would like it. I've never tried it. Well, I've tried it once. I just don't know how long um, it'll stay. It depends on the glue. What I tend to do, um, or what I did when I used to fix these more often, I would take something like this. This is called keypad fix. You get it on eBay for seven bucks or something like that. And essentially, you just shake it up and you take a Q-tip, you take this compound and you apply a very thin layer to each button or however many buttons are causing you trouble. So you apply a very thin layer let it dry. They recommend for a few hours. In my experience, it seems like about 15 minutes. It dries pretty well, and the stuff works really great. You have bad range or your remote's not working at all. A couple of issues to address. First and foremost, make sure that it's getting power. Um, I suppose you could do this without making sure that it's disassembled, but there shouldn't be any corrosion on here. That's an easy fix. If there is corrosion, just scrape it off. Uh, any of these terminals. If there's no corrosion, remote's still not working, what you want to do is make sure that this is incorrectly. So first, we'll need to pop this out here, just pull it out. Likewise, pull this one out. Now we can remove this here. Okay, so we've removed the board from the housing, and you'll want to verify you want to verify that this is soldered in here. Sometimes it'll pop out. If it's popping out nilly-willy, you know that it's a loose connection and the power is not getting to the board. Likewise, on this side here, you want to make sure that this is soldered and it's uh, not loose. I mean, you should be able to rotate it like this, but you shouldn't be able to pop it out. You know, if you apply a little bit of tension, it should stay stuck in there. Likewise here, it can rotate, that's fine. But if it's popping out willy-nilly, you'll want to apply some heat with a soldering iron and uh, just make a better contact here. Okay, so that's that. This is probably the more likely culprit over here. Same situation. You want to make sure 
that this antenna right here is not loose. So this antenna that we just showed right here, it makes contact with the board here and here. So very often after a drop or something, they'll this will get popped out from either one of these sockets here. So what you'll want to do to fix this, take a soldering iron and just push it back in, make sure that it's a proper connection. Easy fix, uh, just need to make sure that you have a soldering iron. So here's a good angle to show that one side of this antenna here goes in here. And if that's loose, uh, obviously the antenna isn't gonna have a good connection and you're not gonna get a good range. Likewise on this side, you just wanna push it in there, solder it. Okay, and then the third issue that you could have, or the third potential fix, is your, um, what's it called here? Crystal oscillator. So this is 27.145 megahertz. Uh, it's possible that, again, with a drop or something, that this is just broken and needs to be replaced. And pretty easy part to replace. It only costs a couple bucks on eBay. And uh, all you'll have to do is just remove it with a soldering iron, these two leads right here. You pull it out, and then you pop a new one in there. Uh, there's no polarity, so it doesn't matter which orientation you put it in. Uh, just need to get it in there and make a good connection. So this part is the same for the RC20, RC9, RC25. And I'm just going to try to zoom in on it here so we can get a better angle at what this part number is. Go. Yeah, Railtron 27.145-30. Uh, and then the bottom text there does change depending on the remote, but it's just it's the same part, so don't worry about that. Okay, so that's how to fix any range issue or if the remote's just not working in general. Um, those are the most likely culprits. Uh, and again, don't worry if your board looks slightly different. Um, it's going to vary depending on the type of uh, remote. These parts will be the same. Some remotes, depending on when they were purchased or when they were manufactured, I should say, um, the crystal oscillator will look a lot smaller. Like it'll extend only out uh, a centimeter or so. It doesn't matter um, the replacement part. It, it doesn't matter, so don't worry about that. Okay. And finally, to reassemble the device, you'll want to first get the buttons back in there, check, uh, get the board back in there, along with the uh, terminals securely fastened to the housing. Once you have that, it's uh, always a good check to put some batteries in, make sure that everything's working. Uh, and once everything isn't confirmed working, go ahead, take the back panel and just snap everything back into place. Um, if some of these tabs were broken on disassembly, uh, feel free to use the adhesive of your choice. Putting the remote back together, it may not be quite as tight as it was originally, so again, that might be another reason to use some sort of adhesive, but uh, it'll look pretty good if you don't use any adhesive. So just a matter of personal preference, you can try putting it back on. If you don't like how it looks, you can pop it back off and glue it back. All right, thanks for watching.